hello everyone this is Victor Momo in this video I want to show how to sum the last n non-blank cells in you know a row okay here's the scenario here let me try and make it plain you have um, a couple of students and they are allowed to take maybe an exam or a test multiple times but only the last in this case three attempts you know would be used for their score you might say oh that's not fair why not use the top three okay well this is the scenario here so their last three attempts if you feel your attempts are good enough why take it again <laughs> so your last three attempts will be what will be used so you have up to six attempts and you know of course people will come populate the data when he does do the exam the fifth time somebody might put data here and once that happens you know his last three attempts are now this and no more this right okay so let me take this out okay so what you're just trying to do is you want to sum up the last three i would say non-blank cells because for the tests he has in written you don't have any data in there so there are many ways you can go about this but for this video i'm going to use the sum and the offset function i'm not saying this is the best method i'm not saying it's preferred but this is what i want to demonstrate for you know for this uh, the purpose of this video this video is not really about the offset function so i'm not going to go into so much detail because um, i'm going to have a series on the offset function subsequently and that should uh, you know give you a deeper insight into how it works but my friend would always say that the offset function just works like um, you know the knights in chess so <laughs> it's funny but yeah you kind of see if i say this is my reference point c3 and i say offset by three rows and two columns what it just means is move by three rows and two columns this becomes my new reference okay if i were here and i say move by or offset by three columns three rows it doesn't matter how you do it whether row first or column first it still arrives at the same thing three columns three rows it lands here from here you can then select a new range using the height and the width argument of the asset function. If it says my height is two, this is my height of two, and my width is three, that's what this means. If it says my height is three, and my width is one, then that's this. The interesting thing is that you could also do, you know, negative heights and negative widths. That's moving in the other direction. So if I say my height is, you know, minus three, it means going this direction, three, and my width is minus one. Well, I wonder what that would mean. <laughs> you know, so, but that's how, you know, the offset function kind of works. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is to find the position of this um, last cell that is not blank. Once I get that cell, then I can then use my width. If they say the last three, it means I'm just going to do this to get my three if i'm here i'm going to use this to get my three if i'm here you know like that so the first thing is to find the position of you know this last non-blank cell you could do it in different ways too you could use this blank function you could decide to test oh, okay is this equals to double quote double quote but what i'm going to use here is i'm going to use the count since these are numeric cells i'm going to use the count and just show you how the count would work with the offset just follow you get it of course, count is only going to count you know, numeric cells, non-blank. So it's telling me that I have four cells here that are numeric. So what this means is that if this is always my starting point, at least for this row, for me to get to that last cell that I need, since the count is four and I'm already in one of the cells, it means I need, I need to move by four minus one, three. One, two, three, and I'll be fine. If I were in this row where my count is six, and I'm already in cell one of six. It means I need to move by what five? One, two, three, four, five. Once I get here, then depending on the number of attempts I'm summing up, I can then just what take advantage of the fact that um, I can do a negative width for my offset function, and I get it done. So let's get into it, and you see how it works. Not as complex. So offset is going to be my reference. But I'm going to make it relative in some sense so that I can, you know, drag downwards and it will work. It says, how many rows am I going to offset by? This is the movement now. How many rows am I moving by? My calculation for Jones is just on this row for Jones. So I'm not moving by any number of rows. It's just zero. 
Now, the number of columns I'm going to move by, I'm going to use the count, more or less just repeating what I did there, but I hardly use helper cells, just a bad habit of mine. Okay, count, don't forget it is count minus one, because I'm already in what the first cell, for me to move to the fourth cell, I need to move by what, four minus one, which is three. That's the reason why the minus one is there, right? You don't move by four, if you move by four from this cell, you will land here in attempt five, okay? So with this portion of the offset function, you are now here in F3 because you've moved no rows, which is zero rows, and then three columns. So you are now here. This is now your pivot point or your new reference point. From here, you now decide, okay, what range you want to select in terms of height and width. For the height, because you are dealing with one row, it's still one row, so your height is just gonna be one. That's not gonna change. Your width in this case, what's it going to be? Depending on the attempts you have here, if I have three attempts, it means I'm going to have a width of minus three. If I have two attempts here, it's going to be a width of minus two. In this case, I want to point it to that cell just to make it dynamic so that when I change the number of attempts, you know, the offset function would adjust accordingly and everything would work. So what I'm just going to do here is just to say I'm going to do negative this cell. Okay, so if there are three attempts from here, it's just going to move by, it's just going to select three cells, including itself, one, two, three. The negative is just to say it's selecting to the left. If you did a positive, it will select from here to the right, meaning F, G, and H. That's all. You close the brackets, you put your sum function around it, you should be fine. 143, take this down. Okay, you can confirm this. From the status bar 143, we can use this one, 204, okay, right? And that's what you want. Now, the only other thing, okay, let's test that. Um, we can change this to 2, okay, if you change it to 2, you can see it adjusts visually, and um, the calculation also adjusts too. I can change this to 4. And everything is fine. The only challenge you have with the function as written, the function is fine. The only thing is to cater for cases where somebody selects an attempt that is greater than the number of attempts a student has, you know, made, which would then give you an error. So, for example, if I select five here now, you know, this really isn't working because this guy has made only, you know, four attempts, so to say. Right. So the only thing you might just need to do is to put you know, like an if function around it, just testing that at least the number of attempts, you know, that the number of attempts for the user is at least greater than or equal to, you know, what is being requested for here, if you understand what I mean. So if I say three attempts, I just need to check that at least everybody has done, you know, more than that or at least that. If not, I can decide what I want to do. That if he hasn't made up to those number of attempts, maybe put zero in there or show blank. And if he has, then just do the calculation. Okay, so that's an easy thing to implement. So the idea here was just to show you how you can use the offset function and the sum function to find, you know, well, maybe the position of the last non-blank cell. And then from there, you know, be a little uh, creative with it. So... Like I always say, if you can think it, Excel can do it. So if you like this video, you can hit the like button. And you can also subscribe to our channel. You can also, you know, make comments and maybe post some alternative, uh, you know, approaches to solving the same problem. That's more than welcome. Okay? I'm out.